Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to be taking a look at the new features that have been added to artboards in Photoshop CC. For anyone unfamiliar with artboards, they're a unique type of document in Photoshop that enable you to create multiple iterations of a design within a single document. For example, if you're a mobile app designer, you might want to mock up an interactive app or a game that has dozens or more screens. Instead of making a new document for each screen, you can create multiple artboards to store multiple screen designs or layouts within a single document. However, artboards aren't limited to just screen design. You might need to mock up multiple versions of an ad that will need to be published to different social media outlets. Or in the case that we'll look at, I wanted to create a simple front and back of a postcard. So in order to create a new artboard, I'll click on New, and then I can change the document type to artboard, in which case I can select from all of these different presets. However, I can also enter in any values that I want. So in this case, I've already created a default here for a postcard. We can see it's 4 by 6 inches, 300 pixels per inch, and I did choose to color manage it with the color profile that I'm using. So I'll click OK, and our artboard is created. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that artboards are their own special kind of group in the Layers panel. So sure enough, here is my artboard. There's no background layer, and in fact, the canvas around the artboard is infinite. So if I use Command minus to zoom out, you can see that I can zoom out as many times as I want, and I can add additional artboards in this space. All right, I'll use Command 0 in order to zoom back in. And I want to change the name of the artboard. So in the Layers panel, I'll double click on it, and we'll just call this Postcard Front. All right, now, before I start designing this postcard, I'd like to add a few guides. So underneath the View menu, I'll choose New Guide Layout. You can see that I can target either the selected artboards, I can target all of my artboards if I want the guides to be the same for all of them, or I can target the canvas. In this case, I'll just use the selected artboard. And I want it to have two columns and three rows, but I want the margin to be even all the way around, so I'll add 0.1 inches here. All right, when we click OK, we can see those guides in our artboard. And now I want to add another file. So I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command-O in order to access my recent files, and I'll choose this illustration. Now I want to see them both, and then I'm going to use the Move tool in order to move this photograph into my artboard. And I can do that by either dragging in the image area, or I can drag from my Layers panel. Then we no longer need this image open, so I'll go ahead and close that. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is when you are dragging and dropping images or different assets to an artboard, they're automatically clipped to that artboard because they're in the artboard layer group. We can always drag them outside of the artboard, and if you drag it all the way off the artboard, Photoshop automatically releases it from that artboard and puts it on top of the layer stack. If I want to drag this back on top of the artboard, I can do so and just drop it on top, and it will put that layer back in the artboard layer group. Now, if you ever have the instance where you need to make sure that a layer either is or is not included in an artboard, there's a new option here on the Layers panel in order to lock it. So if I click it now, it will remain inside this artboard group, even if I drag it all the way over here to the right. It's still there, I just can't see it on the artboard, so again, I'll drag it back into the center. If you ever want to use the alignment options when you're working with an artboard, one of the nice features is that if you only have one layer selected, Photoshop assumes that you want it to align based on that artboard. So with this photograph selected, I can use any of these alignment options. You can see that it will align it to that artboard. All right, now I do want to go ahead and move this up, so I'll just drag with the Shift key in order to drag it up to the top until it hits that guide. And then I'm going to use my Libraries panel here to access my postcard library, and we're just going to add a little bit more information here. I'll tap Return, and then reposition that graphic right there, and I'll drag another graphic in, tap Return in order to apply the transformation, and just go ahead and align that right down here. All right, now if I want to create a secondary artboard, there are a number of different ways that we can do this. First of all, if I have the Move tool selected, I can click anywhere near the edge of an artboard, and that will automatically swap me to the Artboard tool. Now, in the options up here, if I select another size, it will actually resize the current artboard. So I want to create a new artboard. I'll select this icon right here, 
and then I can click in my image area and it actually creates an artboard that is exactly the same size as my current artboard. But if I wanted to change that, I could either use the drop down menu here or I could go to the properties panel. You can see I've got the same drop down menu here or I can change the width and height using the numeric values on my properties panel. If I ever want to flip the orientation, there's icons to do that up in the options bar. And if I have more than one artboard selected, which I would do in my layers panel by holding down the shift key and selecting both of these, then I can use the alignment options in the options bar in order to align these different artboards. All right, if I want to delete this artboard, all I need to do is select it in the layers panel and tap the delete key or I could drag it down to the trash. I actually think the easiest way to create a new artboard that's the same size as the current artboard is to simply click on the little plus icon next to the artboard. And the nice thing about this is when I do create a new artboard, you can see that based on whichever plus I click, that's where it's going to create that artboard. All right, let's go ahead and delete those artboards. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command-0. That will fit the currently selected artboard on the screen right there. And this time, instead of just creating a new one, I want to show you how to create a duplicate artboard. So in this case, I just hold down the Option key and click on the plus icon. Now I have a duplicate. And of course, Command-Z also works if you want to undo that. Because the artboard that I want to create isn't actually a duplicate, I just want to create a new one. So I'll just click on that. And then I want to set up separate guides. So under the View menu, I'll choose New Guide Layout. And I want to change this just a little bit. I still want my two columns and I want the three rows, but I do need a little bit more of a margin at the top. So I'll enter in 0.7 and then click OK. And I want to add that same graphic here that has my name. So I'll drag and drop that in and reposition it. And then I'm going to change to a different library, in this case the digital illustration library here, where I have a number of illustrations which I can select and then shift select in order to select them all and drag them right into my new artboard. I'll tap the return key multiple times in order to place all of those illustrations. And I'll probably want to resize those, so I'll make sure in my artboard that they're all selected. And then use Command T or Control T in order to just resize those down a little bit. I just want to make sure that they fit here with a little bit of space. Tap Return or Enter to apply that transformation. And then I can select any of the layers that I have here and reposition them. Since I have the Move tool selected, I'll just hold down the Command key. That will automatically turn on the Auto Select for me. And I'll just quickly reposition these. Now if I did want to duplicate any of these illustrations from one artboard to another, all I need to do is hold down the Option key when I drag and drop. All right, let's go ahead and delete that one as well. Okay, a few little keyboard shortcuts that I did forget to mention when we were duplicating the artboards. If I wanted to make a duplicate using the Layers panel, I can duplicate a artboard group the same way that I can duplicate a layer group by just using Command J. Or if I wanted another duplicate, I could drag it down to the new layer icon and that would also duplicate my artboards. If I need to collapse all of the artboards so that I can see them all, I can hold down the Command key and click on the little disclosure triangle next to any of the artboards. That will either collapse or expand them all. Now, as you can imagine, when you've got multiple artboards, sometimes you might want to filter what it is that you can see on your Layers panel. So sure enough, we have a way to filter based on artboards. Up at the top where it says Kind, I will select Artboard, and now you can see that I can only see the layers for the selected artboard. I'll go ahead and toggle that off by clicking on the switch here, and just to show you that if I do select a different artboard, I can control click and choose to isolate layers. That's the same thing as using the filter here on the Layers panel so that we only see the layers for that artboard. All right, I'll toggle that off one more time and Use that Command key again in order to collapse all of those. I'm going to select the top two artboards and tap the Delete key to remove them. Use Command-0 in order to center those two artboards. And then when I'm finished, I just want to show you really quickly, there's multiple ways that you can export your artboards. If I wanted to export these both as maybe individual documents, I can do that by using File Export and then Artboards to different files, maybe PSD or TIFF files. I could also 
export all of my artboards to PDF, or I could use export as in order to export these with a variety of other options. So I could change image size or canvas size or scale all of them and export out multiple versions if I wanted to. But I also wanna show you that if I only wanted to export certain content on a single artboard, I could select that content. And then instead of going to the file menu to choose export, I would right click and then choose export as. And we can see now that I get a different option here on the left hand side. Instead of exporting the artboards, I'm actually exporting the individual layers. So there you have it, a quick overview of artboards and their new features in Photoshop CC. My name is Julianne Koss. Thanks for joining me.